Hello, I'm Lara Diamond from Lara's Genealogy here at Roots Tech with Brooke Gans of Reclaim the Records. Um, Brooke, why don't you tell us a little bit about Reclaim the Records and how you got started? Sure, okay. Well, I grew up in New York, and all my family's from New York. My parents, my grandparents, my great-grandparents, basically all my research I want to do in America is in New York. My, parent, my family got off the boat from Ellis Island and settled in New York. But I moved to California. And I realized when I live across the country that it was very difficult to get any records out of New York City or New York State because every state and city do their own thing when it right. comes to putting records online or partnering with groups like Ancestry or Family Search. Some places it's very easy to do research. Other places, unfortunately, like New York City, it is not easy at all. There's nothing online. Mm -hmm. There's very little you can search through. And I got very frustrated living across the country, not wanting to fly across the country right. to do my research in the archives on site. So in 2015, I realized that I could use state freedom of information laws to force the archives to give me a copy, for which I would pay for the copies, mm -hmm. and I could then take my copies and put them online for free so that finally New York researchers would have a resource online. And so I filed a freedom of information request with New York City Municipal Archives in 2015. I think they were a little surprised because that's not usually something people do as a genealogical tool. Um, but it was successful, and I, I had to, unfortunately, take them to court to get them to understand that, yes, they were subject right. to the freedom of information law in New York, but we won a settlement. I won all the records I wanted, which were 48 microfilms covering the New York City Marriage Index from 1908 to 1929. It wasn't even actual marriage certificates. It was just the index, the basic things we need to do genealogy research. And I got copies of them. And I was able to get them digitized with help from FamilySearch, who very generously donated the scanning and sent me back the mm -hmm. microfilms and a hard drive full of the images. I put them on the Internet Archive, and they're now free to use. So that was the first part of this little project, which I didn't know was going to become such a project. And I realized, you know what? There's so much else out there that could be put online using freedom of information laws. Why don't I keep going with this and see how much I can do? So step two, I decided to continue with the same record sets, the indexes to New York City applications, affidavits, and marriage licenses. Mm -hmm. And 1930 to, 19, to the present are stored at the New York City clerk's office, you know, where you go to get right. married at the clerk's office. So in 2016, I wrote a Freedom of Information Records request to the New York City clerk's office saying, hi, you have the index to all these old marriage licenses. I would like a copy. I will pay you under the Freedom of Information law. Will you send me a copy? They decided not to answer me several times. Then they decided not to answer my attorney or call her back when she called and left messages many times. So we took them to court too. And we won a settlement because again, they are subject right. to this law. They are a public entity. They are a public government body. We won all their records and we won attorney's fees. Nice. And those are now in the process of going online. Um, we won two things. We won 110 microfilms covering 1930 to 1972. Mm -hmm. But then we also won a text database covering 1950 to 1995. So there's, you know, there's some overlap mm -hmm. in there. And the text database, they had made for in-house use on their own computers. It's, it has some issues with some, some typos, some right. transposed letters, things like that. But it's the first time we've ever had that data. It was 3.1 million records, wow. which is 6 million names, you know, two parties to a marriage. So we put it all online. And we are in the process of getting all the images from the 1930 to 1972 part put online. I was uploading the Bronx 1949 last night. Oh. Um, and those will hopefully be completed in the next month or two. Have they been indexed? They have not been indexed yet. That's the next thing everybody asks me. That's great that you got all these images of these things. Who's going to index them? Mm -hmm. Well, everything Reclaim the Records gets. Let me back up and see what Reclaim the Records is. Go for this it. was just sort of my crazy little project born out of my frustration from not having New York records available. But I decided to turn this into an actual project, a group project, because so many genealogists were having the same problem. So I founded Reclaim the Records. We have a website, reclaimtherecords.org. <laughs> <laughs> and we, um, we work together to get records put online using freedom of information laws, informing archives and libraries that, yes, you have to provide a copy. We're not asking you for a favor to give us a copy. You are required under the law to give us a copy. We'll pay you for the copies. But you are a public government body. You take tax money. We want our, mon we want our money's worth. Um, so one of the things Reclaim the Records did is we put everything online for free. We use the Internet Archive at the moment as our place to put them, but we're happy to share with anybody. Everything we post is public domain, no restrictions, no paywalls, no logins, and we have happy to give copies to Family Search, Ancestry, Find My Past, My Heritage, any individual nonprofit genealogy group. 
and two nonprofit genealogy groups in New York are doing an indexing project that I know of. Okay. That is the Italian genealogy group and the German genealogy group, both based in the New York metro area. And they're creating the first ever text searchable index of these images. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I mean, the images were, they're nice to work with because they are broken down by borough and by year, and then they're alphabetical by surname. So it's, it's really, and then they're separated into brides on one side and grooms on the other. So they're really easy to work with. But having a text searchable version of this would be great. Yes, definitely. Yeah, so we encourage people to index, but we don't really manage that ourselves. Okay. We're happy to let other people handle that. Okay, so have you expanded beyond New York? Yes, that's the other thing too. This was born out of my personal frustration, but I realize there's a real need in genealogy for a group that reclaims records, mm -hmm. that gets records that are not available anywhere else, not available on Family Search Microfilm or Ancestry or MyHeritage or Find My Past or any other group. And so we built a website, reclaimtherecords.org, and we, uh, sub we had people submit their suggestions for what's the next record set that we should go after. Record sets that they know exist, not that they wish existed, right. and th that for some reason are very inaccessible to genealogists. Either they are only available on site in a certain archive or library for limited operating hours, usually just Monday through Friday, which is hard to get to, mm -hmm. or they're legally supposed to be open, but for some reason they are locked behind you know, the, the desk at the library and they don't let the public see them, things like that. Right. So we take a lot of suggestions and we research every suggestion, and if we think it seems worthy, we add it to our to-do list on the website. Our to-do list currently has something like 65 items on it. Wow. Some of them are small for a particular county. Some of them are very large, such as the birth index to an entire state that never had a birth index online wow. for whatever reason. And we filed our first case outside of New York. Um, somebody had written in to reclaim the record saying, I would really love it if you guys could look into getting more Missouri records. There is no Missouri birth index after 1910, which is when the state started keeping the records. And they do release Missouri death certificates after they're 50 years old, so you can make an index prior to, say, 1966. But after 1966, there's not even a death index, like right. not even a listing. This was a person who died on this date. That's all we're asking for. Or this was a person who was born on this date. Not certificates, just basic right. index for basic research. So one day, um, I saw her, her email come in. I was reading about it in my car while I was waiting for a pizza to get made. I had a little <laughs> time on my hands. And I was Googling Missouri Vital Records, Missouri, um, Missouri State Sunshine Law. They call it the Sunshine Law there. Uh, whereas New York is the Freedom of Information Law. Mm -hmm. Every state has a different name. And I realized Missouri's law allows for the reveal of just given name, surname, and date of either births or deaths. Which is great for genealogists to know that that record even exactly. exists. Exactly, just to even know that somebody existed, mm -hmm. to give you a hint. Mm -hmm. You're not giving up any privacy-related right. information, any personal information, but just to know. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a Missouri Sunshine Law request. I wrote two, one for the birth index, one for the death index. I wrote those in February of last year, and I submitted them. Under the law, they're supposed to reply in three days. Of course, they didn't, but I was patient, and eventually I got in touch with somebody who said, well, yes, I, I guess under this law, you're entitled to a copy, um, but we're going to charge you a ridiculous amount of money for it because we are going to pretend that we need to run a search on our database for every single day individually oh, and that wow. we can't do a full date search from this date to mm -hmm. this date. So initially, the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services attempted to charge us $1.5 million. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was very nice of them. <laughs> they said that's how long it would take the hours of a person mm -hmm. working there, working at $42 an hour, to run each day individually. And at that point, we hired a lawyer. And we got back to them and said, you know, you can do a date range where it's one little search that says, search all birth index from this date to this date. Mm -hmm. One search, that will take maybe an hour, maybe an extra hour to run that larger program. It will cost maybe $400 tops. Why are you attempting to charge us $1.5 million? After they sort of admitted that they were overcharging us because they were trying to get us to go away, they then stopped responding to my attorney, and we are now suing them. All right. Well, yes. good luck. <laughs> Thank you. So this is sort of our new, our new paradigm. We go after records that are not available mm -hmm. anywhere. We take suggestions from the public, and then we make our records requests, and if somebody it does not, if some government entity either doesn't want to respond in the proper time frame or wants to pretend that the law doesn't apply to them when it clearly does, Okay. All right, and we wrapping in. up in two sentences or less, what are your next plans? Oh, good question. We have turned this into a nonprofit. We have filed the form to become a 501c3 nonprofit. I filed the IRS form 1023EZ the other night, and we are going to do this, but much larger, and hopefully get many, many more millions of records released to the public. Okay, and thank you very much. Again, Brooke from Reclaim the Records. Thank you. Thanks for watching.